It's Monday, the 28th of August, about 4 p.m. here on the West Coast. My name's Juan Brown, and you're watching the Blanco Lirio Channel with a special update on what's going on in and around Houston with Tropical Storm Harvey. And what I want to do is take some of the information that we've learned over the Oroville disaster over the last, uh, well, half a year or so, and transfer some of that information to you folks in the Houston area to help you find the data and information that you need to know about your water and flood situation in your local area. Okay, now what I really want to get into is the water system in and around Houston and what's going on with it and what to look out for. In the news, you're hearing a lot about Buffalo Bayou. What is Buffalo Bayou? Well, that's the main water conveyance system through downtown Houston. That moves water from the west side of town right through the middle of town, through this beautifully landscaped bicycle path type area, and into the Houston Deep Water Channel, and then eventually down south into the Bay of Galveston and the Gulf of Mexico. Galveston Bay and the Gulf of Mexico. The flood control structure for Buffalo Bayou is two reservoirs, Attics Reservoir and Barker Reservoir, which straddle I-10 just to the west side of town. These are the two reservoirs you want to keep an eye on, and I've got links that you can keep track of the reservoir elevation in real time, and I'll share with you in the comments section of this video below. Now, Attics Reservoir has a max elevation of 122.7 feet. The current elevation as of today is 103 feet, so there's a little bit of room left. Barker Reservoir, max elevation, 112 feet. Current elevation as of earlier today, 97.6 feet. So both of those reservoirs are very full. Both of those reservoirs are earth-filled dams. They've got concrete spillways, but they have earth-filled dams. Out here, we would call them levees. They're long, low, earth-filled dams. One thing we've learned in the Orville situation is you cannot, under any circumstances, ever allow water to overtop an earth-filled dam. If you do, it will fail. You have to get the water out of the reservoir. So people are wondering and asking, why are they releasing so much water from this reservoir in an already flooded situation? Well, why? Because operators simply have no choice. They have to evacuate the water out of these two reservoirs in order to make room for what's predicted to be additional rain from this tropical storm Harvey because the darn storm has stalled and it continues to bring additional rain bands into the area. And they're making their best educated guess as to what Mother Nature is going to do. Thus, they are forced to release water into Buffalo Bayou. That water release began earlier today, Monday, the 28th of August, and water I believe water in, around the uh, surrounding areas is rising at a rate of about four to six inches per hour. The tropical depression that was Harvey in the Gulf of Mexico blossomed up into a hurricane, a category four hurricane in just 57 hours. Very fast growth in that storm. Why? You have the extra warm water in the Gulf of Mexico. Normally this time of year, it is hurricane season but I think the water temperatures are about two degrees above normal. Plus you have a lack of wind shear to knock that storm down. So there was no wind shear to knock that storm down. It just blossomed right up to a category four. Now here in Northern California on my back porch here, it's nearly a hundred degrees down in the valley. It's about 107. What does that got to do with Hurricane Harvey and what's going on in Houston? High pressure, we've got a very dominant, very strong high pressure here in the West Coast, and that is what is preventing Tropical Storm Harvey now from going anywhere. It is stalled out over and just east of the Houston area, Southeast Texas. It's trapped by high pressure. Here's the current surface analysis chart, high pressure to the west, current satellite view, and the 48 hour forecast surface analysis chart and finally, the NOAA forecast chart for the tropical storm. So this sequence of events has put uh, FEMA director Brock Long and all the folks that are in charge of uh, disaster preparedness and evacuations in a tough situation. So instead of ordering the evacuation of the huge metropolitan area of Houston, they a shelter in place policy to get through this storm. Why did officials adopt a shelter-in-place policy 
in this uh, Tropical Storm Harvey situation. Well, where are you going to go? It's all flat. And how are you going to get there? The highways are basically flooded. So you're probably going to cause a bigger problem with evacuating folks in that large of a metropolitan area than you are just having them stay and shelter in place. As long as you're prepared with plenty of water and fuel if you need to. And the neat thing about a coastal town is most folks have a boat and they know how to use it. Now it looks like the NOAA forecast for this uh, tropical storm Harvey is to initially kind of back up before it begins a general, a general track to the north and east and then it will finally accelerate out of the area and you'll get some relief. But in the meantime, you're going to get a year's worth of precipitation, upwards of 50 inches of rain during this week. That's why operators need to make room in the reservoir for additional rain. Both Barker and Attic's reservoir are under a uh, major rebuild or reconsideration to be rebuilt right now. I've got the links to that. I haven't had time to study what all is going on there and what sort of improvements they're considering for those reservoirs. But just like Oroville, it is all part of our aging infrastructure in America today and needs constant maintenance and improvement and watching. So I'll give you those links to the water levels in those two reservoirs so that you can watch them and make an informed decision as to what you need to do. If you're sheltering in place at home and that water level continues to rise and uh, you may be in a lower, like a one-story home or something, one thing I would advise that we've learned in Hurricane Katrina is don't get stuck in your attic. Go ahead and take a chainsaw, hand axe, or whatever you need to do and poke a hole in that attic so that you always have an escape route, route out of the top of that house if you're gonna stay sh and shelter in place. If you found this information helpful, hit like and subscribe, but more importantly, stay tuned to your own local emergency broadcast network and follow their guidance. And as always, look forward to your constructive comments and helpful links in the comment section below.